score analysis, risk Better late than never, hey. <laughs> um, welcome, everybody. Okay. Yeah, had some stuff to sort out before I went live, so I am a few minutes late, but I don't care. <laughs> you guys could, you guys can wait. I'm sure. Um, cool. Okay, so we've got. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll do a stream, we'll go through some charts, we'll do some fun stuff, and then we'll get JJ on, uh, just to have another chat with us, which will be really cool. Uh, if anyone would like to join in the conversation this evening, uh, if you want to send me a DM or just tag me in the chat or something, if you do want to join in, we'll open up the Zoom room and we will, uh, yeah, I won't open up the Zoom room for everyone but if anyone does want to join in senti i'm sure you will probably be joining us as usual uh possibly <laughs> um uh p if you want to join in and if anyone else who's watching does fancy it then yeah just tag me in the chat or or send me a message and i'll send you the link for that if you are of course a sensible individual who will <laughs> not not talk nonsense um in honour of Senti today, I do have the pink gin. It's some cheap Gordon stuff, but sorry, I couldn't really get anything better. But I do have I do have the gin. I am on the gin and tonic today. So yeah, bit of a change. Um, and yeah, this should be good fun. Cool. So I guess we can start off and. Uh, um, yeah, I'll set the zoom room up uh, and check on all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's been an interesting day again, hey. Every Friday we seem to be we seem to just keep getting these pumps like clockwork every Friday, and it's it makes for some quite interesting interesting streams because it just keeps on happening <laughs> yeah senti i need to i need to get some proper stuff i'm not i'm not a pink gin connoisseur so uh yeah i mean the the gordons is gonna have to do for today so did anyone take a short trade off the weekly i did but i did take profit off of that fairly quickly because it is the weekend. So yeah, who knows what will happen with that. Did take profit like literally just as we came down. Didn't even take out these lows. So I mean, we're still, still around the same place. <laughs> JJ is in the chat. Okay, all right, I better get the Zoom call set up. I was, I was expecting you about 10 o'clock, JJ. So I mean, we, we can start early because it means that 
I can possibly get a bit of an earlier night. I've got to be up really early tomorrow. <laughs> if anyone remembers the whole um, the whole lavender field shenanigans when we actually had our massive we were dumping weren't we and i was at some lavender fields tomorrow i've agreed to go to some pick your own sunflowers thing so uh yeah up early again tomorrow morning weekends around there uh, okay new meeting whoa that has taken over my entire screen right, let's get this set up My big old headphones on. Because otherwise everyone will get an echo. And hopefully, all being well, this will work. Often it doesn't. <laughs> JJ scares me because he's a market maker and he wants my money. I have nightmares of JJ voice sometimes. <clears throat> yeah, I have sent out the Zoom link, guys. So if you would like to join in Centi P J J, then. I've sent you guys the link for the Zoom call. And again, if anyone else does want to join in, then yeah, just, just send me a message. It is silent. Who's here? Ah, here we go. I'm hoping I can hear everyone. Let me just check my own settings here. Ah, hello. Hello. Hey, how are you doing? Yeah, good. How are you? Good, thank you. Can the uh, stream hear me? Yes, the stream should be able to hear Hello, uh, stream. How is everybody <laughs> on this amazing day? I think everybody's a bit hyped. Yeah. I sure am. Fuck yeah, dude. Let's go, <laughs> Bitcoin. Let's fucking go. <laughs> Senti's clearly been on the gin already, so... I am so hyped. <laughs> JJ, are you, are you there? Maybe? I see you're there, but I can't... Hey, I can't. happy Halloween! <laughs> hello, hello. <laughs> happy, uh, yeah. How's, how's everyone doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're good. We're, um, we're happy today because Bitcoin's pumping again, so... Yeah, that was a, that was <laughs> a really good move. Nice. That was nice. That was nice. Yeah. Good to see. Good yeah, to see. I'll, uh, I'll do the usual. I'll set up screen share so no problem. we can all see what's going on. And, oh, how strange. It's not letting me just share my normal screen. Hey, is there uh, somebody else from Regina here? I'm from not sure. TJ Uplands. Get out of here. Nice. Uh, Not that many Canadians. From where? Regina? Exactly. Exactly. I thought you said, is anybody here from... Uh, from uh... Okay, let's yeah, keep this no, PG. No. No, no, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, I think everybody uh, is, mate. It's, it's the capital of Saskatchewan. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Please don't ask me what I'm doing here, but you know, I'm looking after my 84-year-old mother. This is where I grew up. <laughs> so... I'm back here looking after her for a while before I moved to London. So uh, that is amazing. It's it's above. If anybody's wondering, it's above North Dakota, and the winters here make Siberia look like the Bahamas. 
Uh, wow. So just uh, <laughs> can you guys see my my screen? Uh, yes, we can. Cool. Yeah, I, it's Zoom's updated itself, so I mean, it, it was either going to show my entire screen with all the various windows open, or I had to like drag it to a, a little portion of it. So, oh, cool. cool. Yeah, I think that's all, all kind of working now. <clears throat> so, yeah, it does look like we have got others from. Uh, well, we've got a few others from Canada in here anyway. Um, oh, cool. Ontario Clutch from Ontario. Um, Oh, I'm, uh, yeah. So how's your week been, JJ? It's, it was a really good week. We robbed mm -hmm. from wholesale and gave to retail. <laughs> yeah. You know, it was beautiful. Um, nice. Kept people from shorting off of that low and, and, uh, profile. Really yeah. Worked. You know, we went right from a balance low to a balance high in, in ES and, mm -hmm. and in crypto. So. Yeah, on um again my my charting for ES, I don't have a profile for it. I don't know if Go Charting does that or anything. Um I don't have no, Sierra do. charts, so they Go do. Go charting do, yeah. Cool, I might check that out in, in a minute and and then we can get the profile up once I've got that all set up. Sure, um, yeah. I was my mine was super simple. I was looking at a daily level down here and it got a bounce off of that and then we've got an old range. <clears throat> so oh, we came man. into dipped out deviation from the low of the range came back into the top and now we've, it's breaking out again but i mean this is that channel can go the, the, uh, <laughs> not much on it for me I no, it was change. a it was a strange week in the ES because mm. what we did was we took out the uh we, we just destroyed short sellers on monday <laughs> yeah. and and that's why the market fell apart two days later mm -hmm. because there was no covering bid at 4400 at 44 uh 10 4400 yeah. So the market just fell apart in the last hour of the day. Yeah. And then that night they just consolidated it, cleaned it up over the next couple of days. And today they just ripped it. Mm -hmm. And um, the nice thing about, um, you know, the ES is we have, you know, we had this really nice balance zone and these things work for us. I don't know if I can put a, a chart yeah. in there, but in, if, if you'd uh, like to do us, if you'd like to do a share, JJ, you can you can share oh, yeah. your screen on on here. Yeah, um, no I problem. can just stop sharing mine with you, and then I can bring okay. this up on on stream for everyone to see. Sure, no problem. Because yeah, if we're going to talk ES, then you're the guy. I I just have a few lines on this chart. <laughs> no, you'll <laughs> see the the same principles of market profile work mm -hmm. uh, yeah. for ES and crypto. Yes, that's what I love about this charting because it just, uh, you know, the one thing about retail trading that's really hard is not getting turned around. Mm -hmm. uh, because to keep your head straight is is a very difficult thing um, when you're not controlling the order flow, right? <laughs> I mean, it's it's really hard. So this is one thing it tells me where the position is, where the short position is. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you could see my my chart right now, not sure if you can yet. Yeah, I can see it. I'm just pulling it up on the stream so everyone else can take a look. So what I'm gonna do there is I'm go. just gonna I'm gonna do a little. Now, you guys, unfortunately, I really hope you know who John Madden is. But if we could do a little chalk talk like they do in football, okay? The kind I, of I was football. gonna, I was yeah. gonna say, I, I know, I that's all I know is Madden NFL. Like I know the football and Matt, John Madden, but I don't know if it's John, John, <laughs> John Madden used to be it's from the of Wall Street. Yeah. Uh, no, John Madden used to be the best football coach in the, in the NFL back in the seventies, yeah. the eighties. That's it. He was yeah. the, coach of the Oakland Raiders so then he became a, uh, a sportscaster mm -hmm. and he used to do this thing called chalk talk where he'd you know have the players on the screen and he'd be doing arrows and stuff like this yeah and he'd go boom there's your middle <laughs> linebacker so, you know that's so I'm gonna do a little coach Madden here so we yeah. had a 10-day balance in the ES mm -hmm. from uh 4365 to that 40 44 23 level and it worked just beautifully buying yeah. and selling these, you know, uh, these balance uh, extremes. Then we broke up above it. Mm -hmm. And you, this was my level here. My, my level was from 4377. This is my one zone to 4438. Yep. So what's supposed to happen is you're supposed to come up into this level, maybe do a little look above and then come back down and test mm -hmm. it. Right. And then find some buying and go back up. These crazy idiots 
they have the they because they've got everybody short. Yeah. This profile is that looks like the Olympic torch that like this is one of the most weird structures where they just ran the thing. And what they did was because it's such a momentum trader driven market, mm. they'll buy they'll hold it in a balance range, buy everything, then take it up and sell it. Yeah. Right. And that's all they're doing. And they'll put a big buy order here. So you can't short the damn thing. Mm -hmm. Right. So what they did was once they took that buy order and took the stops of that Friday on Monday, they bought in a lot of shorts. Right. There were buy-ins and margin calls that pushed the market up in, in one of the strangest pushes I've ever seen. Right. And I've seen some crazy things in my life. Mm -hmm. Right. So when that happened, it forced a lot of these people who were short to cover. Yeah. So the next day, the market kind of did its thing, came down. When it broke that swing low, Mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it just puked and it just came down so hard because there was no shorts to cover. Usually you have shorts, they're buying all over the place in here, right? But because we bought them all in and destroyed them, (laughs) <laughs> there was nobody to buy the thing. So then what it did was it flushed 4377. And this is called a look below and look where it went right to that balance low. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Hit it the next, you know, uh, the next overnight, this is the globe X. This is, so this is Thursday's trading. This is the globe X. Yeah. The globe X low couldn't break 4370. So as soon as we come back over 4377, our target is 4438. Mm-hmm. Right now, we're not supposed to get there the next day, <laughs> right? But this yeah. market, but these idiots went and the big size traders went and shorted down here. Now there's a massive short position, and look where the short position is. The short position is right underneath, yeah, right where that balance high is, mm-hmm. right? And this is why there's a short position because the profile is a P profile. So the short is right underneath here all the way down. And every time the market gets down here, people buy, buy, buy and yeah. chase the price back up and there's no supply. Yeah. Right. It's, it's just, it, it's just a crazy, crazy market, you know, and then you'll look at things like Microsoft, mm-hmm. like what the hell is this? Right. Microsoft has a short position in it underneath 302, right? Microsoft also has a all oh, this. They filled the gap. But, you know, when I saw this, I was like, Microsoft's one of the oldest companies around. How could they have a gap, which is a short position, mm. when there's like 7 billion shares of stock floating out there, <laughs> right? Yeah. R- riddle me that, <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's just, yeah. It's, you know? it's just mad what's going on at the moment and it's across all the markets isn't it it's just like it got to that point where with the es especially you you zoom out and zoom out and zoom out and it's like where where does it go from here it was just like vanishing into that like it oh. looked like it was just completely just vanishing into the distance there was no structure oh. left on it it was just okay we're just going up and we're not Look doing at... anything apart from going up and it was it just seems... insane every mid month mm. right or close to the middle of the month where that options gobbledygook happens, we do this huge flush. And what that does is it takes out Mm. all of the sweet candid swing longs. Wholesale buys everything with big prop. When they take those stops, it just rips. Yeah. Liquidates, rips, liquidates. The thing is, and the ranges are very, it's very hard to swing trade this crazy thing, Mm. right? It's trading very much like a penny stock. So, the thing of, which helps me, which is great. So I'm in a zone now that started at 36.55. Yeah. Right. The top of that zone is 46.19. Mm-hmm. And when I came up with these levels last year, I laughed my ass off. I didn't think there's no way we're going to get up there. <laughs> and here we are. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, is it's this, crazy. Is this the one you got from? There was the range. Yeah, last year you were saying there was it was the COVID uh, crash time, wasn't it? And yeah, this yeah. The one where you just you, it's yeah. stacking, isn't it? So we're, we're going it's like just, talking doubles and doubles and, and it's crazy. Yeah, I'll, I'll show yeah. you where it is. There's there's the original range right here, mm-hmm. 
this 2750 to 2800 something, right? Yeah. This little green box, right? So that was the original balance range. And then I doubled it and mm-hmm. I doubled it and I doubled it and I doubled it. <laughs> you know, and if you keep doubling it, it just keeps going and going, you know? So th- there's a reason why the markets are acting like this because yeah. right now there's, here's the thing, right? We've got zero interest or no interest mm. um, rates. So there's lots of cash. Number two is people aren't selling their Apple, their Microsoft, because what they're doing is they're getting loans against it, right? <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I've put out that article. I don't know if you guys have seen it. Uh, it's from the Wall Street Journal. There's $800 billion that is borrowed against equity portfolios right now. Mm. Right. That's a lot of cabbage. It's mad. It's right? like I, I can remember when I first got into crypto and I think this is a lot of people doing this with stocks. I I, I went on a few occasions where I would uh, I'd just be convinced that this thing is just going to continue going up. And I was like, OK, I'll take out a loan and I'll buy some more with a loan and borrow money in order right? to buy more Bitcoin. And people are doing that with stocks now. It's It's just crazy. As of late February, investors have borrowed $814 billion against their portfolios. This is up 49% from a year earlier, right? So why do they do this? Because they don't have to pay capital gains, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, it's mad. I, I noticed as well something interesting because what you're talking about, it, uh, these ranges kind of stacking on top and that's where you get your zones from. Yep. If we're looking at the balance zone that we had, uh, like you were saying from, what was it, 27th to the 5th of August before we did break out, mm-hmm. where, where price ended up was exactly double that range. Yeah. So you, you just stack it back on top and it, it's exactly there. And that's it... that's where they sold it. So I've, I've, it... Just, I've just pulled... Uh, a fib um which gets the the point two uh, or the the two on there as well but we can see it um going up and if you if you take the july 26 high to the july 27 low cool and then you stack that on top of each other the the top at 44.75 or wherever it is 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 just that exact pretty much that exact move it's sort of amazing. It's, sort of... <laughs> it's just mad how just the markets just keep doing that. This is one thing people, old traders, curse and bitch and moan about algorithms. Yeah. Right? You'll see it all over Twitter. They hate algos. I love algos, right? Because algos and electronic trading has made the market so exact mm-hmm. that the order flow is is more predictable. I mean, I'd rather have an algo executing, um, you know, than you know, some drunk trader, right? <laughs> like, you know, like the guys <laughs> yeah. I used to work with, you know, they're missing fills. These things are just, it's just beautiful how, how the market will trade to yeah. very, very specific places. You know, it, it's quite amazing. It's, uh, yeah, it's, and thank God I found market profile. Oh my God. Otherwise I was actually today, one of the guys who gave me a job after my, my heart surgery, um, mm. he had a financial software company. And I was teaching people how to trade and teaching them about the market, but I was just learning about retail trading. And yeah. I remember we were trading together one day and, you know, he was like, okay, trade my account. So I started trading his account and I sucked. <laughs> I was horrible. Every single trade I took, I lost money on. Right. And I was yeah. like, wait a minute, right. This retail is supposed to be easy. <laughs> right. It used to be like taking candy from a baby. Right. But no, it was, it was, it took a whole journey of discipline and journaling and research yeah. and all of this stuff that, you know, institutional guys were, you know, the bell rings, we're in the bar, mm-hmm. you know, we're in the pub, you know, we're not, uh, you know, and then, so yeah, it's a completely different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. No, that's not a, no, 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 no. You guys, <laughs> listen, if you had to see, if you had to see the kind of specimens I don't even call them people. I call them specimens that I used to have to work with, right? You, you guys, this is this is nothing, right? These guys were just they were animals. Like, well, they, yeah. they that that's an insult to animals. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I mean that's the thing. They're, they're joking about it in the chat, but that that is it. Like, once you and it, it's how I I kind of 
I, I see trading as a very enjoyable job. Um, and what I'll do once I've had a good day of trading and I, I come away and I've got got what I wanted to get out of the market, I'll, I'll go and I'll have a few beers in the evening and I'll enjoy myself. And that's what it's all about. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, and that's uh, I think I think that's it. And that's that's the thing. Like any everyone watching this, that's the the aim, I guess, is why we do this as a community. Exactly. Is that's 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 what we want for everyone. Like just be able to have trading and, and to enjoy your life off of the back of it because you don't need oh, to yeah. work. You don't need to work a day in your life if you can learn to trade. And yeah. Although we're working here. Yeah. But. <laughs> oh, this is this is the hardest work you will do, but it's rewarding. Yeah, exactly. Right? But it's good, yeah. But it's rewarding. And the yes. other thing is for young people, see, like when I was, I'm, I'm 53. So when I started, I got, I went to an interview once at a brokerage firm and the old bugger told her, he said, you're not wearing the right kind of shoes. Mm. And I'm like, my shoes, what's wrong with my shoes? He's like, you're wearing loafers. He goes, serious men wear lace up shoes. I was like, okay, I didn't know this. Right. <laughs> so like, you know, they, they had all these weird little rules and, you know, like you had to pay your dues and, you know, you got treated like, just like, like they, they, you know, they'd work you like a rented mule. Hmm. Right. So young people now today, they don't really want to put up with all that. So if they can learn to be financially independent, you know, Bitcoin, ES, whatever, you yeah. know, whatever floats your boat, you know, whatever flavor you choose to make money from, learn that market. And uh, it's a beautiful thing, mm -hmm. you know. I um, think since the March or since the COVID crash and with the rise of Robin Hood and the ease of access, yeah. I really do think that the financial markets have become a forefront in a lot of young people's minds now i yeah, think a lot of young people have got exposed to it and we've got a lot of new people coming into the markets exactly Hell of a lot i, of new I think so too it's almost like it's it's the people that a few years ago would have spent their time playing um fifa and call of duty and uh what's that stupid um stupid mobile phone game that everyone clash of clans <laughs> yeah and the 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 what is it Fortnite and stuff like that it's all these people and have now realized that you can play a game online which is what trading is it's playing a game against a lot of other people and it, it's like a i see it as like a sport and a, a strategy game like a game of chess like a game of football like whatever you want and uh we're able to do that now and and uh yeah make or lose some money doing it which is much more fun than just playing a game and not having any reward at the end of the day so if yeah if you have good risk management and you know mm -hmm. you, you devote some time to learning this thing and learn the actual craft of trading yeah. uh you know it's uh it, it's like anything else like i mean it's really cool like i mean we use sierra chart for es so you can like rewind the charts right yeah and i used to do that all the time right um you know uh you'd rewind the chart make notes about what's going on and i just basically had to do that you know mm. uh yeah, it's 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 a great. I think I think the one thing too is once you learn how to trade, it's nice not having somebody breathing down your neck telling you what to do every day at work. You know, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. I always yeah, sure. I always think of you. Any of you guys have seen the movie Office Space? You know, the guy's working at this office and he's just got this creepy boss who like lingers around his desk all the time. You know. And it's just like, he's just like, you can just see him cringing, like, get away from me, you weirdo. Yeah. You know, and that's what it's like when you work in an office, right? It's just, it, you know, I've done it, you know? <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah, definitely. It's, uh, yeah, it's just nice to be able to, yeah, work for yourself and, uh, yeah, not have to worry about other people just, yeah, telling you what to do all the time. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to find a, uh, a chart on mine because Senti was saying I've been, I've been looking into this chart um charting software called go charting uh, and it has the s on there i'm just trying to find it just to, to okay, have, cool. a, have a look so i mean <laughs> i was just uh oh, i need tough. to i need to get my my head around how it all works i think this this software um yeah so yeah, I I see. I see as well. You've got the the Bitcoin chart up there. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. yeah what do you, a... What do you think of today's move as well? So that's it was quite an it's, interesting one today with the. It was nice. It was it was nice to see how, you know, I was, I've been looking at these sort of zones, and you know, we had, 
this was a top of my old balance zone. So I doubled mm-hmm. the crazy thing. Right. <laughs> and uh, you know, there's the middle of it and we got to the middle. I was like, Hey, this worked. Right. Yeah. And then it's like, you know, and then, Hey, we got up to, to the target, you know, which is the middle of here. And uh, then we faded this. We looked below the midpoint. Uh, couldn't get down here. Couldn't take out that yeah. swing low. Yeah. And then kaboom, you know, right back up. Um, that particular swing low, I noticed on the, uh, it, it, to me, it just seemed like everybody was waiting for that. And it was an overcrowded oh. trade. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That's I, the reason it just ripped up because I, it was just too much. I was waiting for it. It never happened. I, I think the whole, the whole <laughs> yeah. market was waiting for that. And, yeah. It, it, and the whole it, market's looking at something. You know what happens. Exactly. exactly. This and move this did is, catch me by surprise for sure. These old profile traders, they call, they have something that they call the 45 degree angle mm-hmm. in yeah. a profile. Right. When it does this and you've got this kind of a 45 degree angle in a profile, that's telling you that shorts are trapped. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, that, that's a very interesting thing. And always the move is, uh, is upward from there. Yeah. And so if, where was that? It was right here. Let's uh, dig a little deeper here. Yeah, you could see every time the price came down, it was met with buying by the selling just shuts off, mm-hmm. right? Now it's not a it's not a really B profile because it does have excess on it. You know, it's yeah. uh, it it does have excess, but you could see that the selling just just keeps shutting off. And even on this stop run, you know, the, the stop run there took took the M low, mm-hmm. right? It it took that WX low. But it couldn't take out the big stops, which were here and here. Yeah. Right. And so then, those big stops, when that couldn't take that, I'd be nervous if I was a short, mm-hmm. if I saw that, you know? Yeah. That's why absolutely. the structure is so cool. And now actually I can start seeing it on the old candle wax, you know? Yeah. Um, like what I do with think or swim um, is I just use the ES and because in the ES it's, it's a little easier because wholesale market makers and size traders will buy their position underneath VWAP, then they'll take the market over VWAP to sell it. Yeah. So you just use VWAP and these standard deviations. But for some reason, I don't know, TD doesn't have anything on crypto. So I don't know, uh, think or swim. So, you know. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> yeah, we, it, it's similar kind of stuff that, that we use with, yeah, with, with VWAP and everything like VWAP is a massive part of the, yeah my own personal trading style and i know it works really well with crypto as well especially especially if you're on a day that's had like you're coming out of a trending day or something you get moves into vwap at the end of the day and they just explode back off of them the bounces that you get so if we if we were to get a move into vwap today after trending up i I mean it's very unlikely that we're going to get that because we're so far above it but you just see it and it it just comes down and then it will just explode out of that vwap again exactly yeah that's pretty cool. Yeah. It's yeah, market interest- structure is amazing. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it was a really interesting move down, actually, that we had, because, again, it wasn't... <sighs> It was one of those where, where often, and we've had moves in the past where you, you come down and we come down quite a long way and you get a big short squeeze out of it. But on this occasion, it just, yeah. It, it's it was like just they really, faded it. Yeah. Right. It was kind of like, you know, when you land a plane, it just kind of gently, gently descends. You know, it doesn't go yeah. like top, top gun to hell. It, it just gently, you know, <laughs> it, it just drops like... and then it drops and it drops. You know, that's what it was like. Yeah, and it was almost like a little bit more even. It was so much more subtle than the moves yeah, we've exactly. had in the past. Exactly, and, and it's probably yeah. the case that what we've been seeing is now we're all talking about short squeezes now because that's all we've been getting the last few weeks. And the last few of them, we had them down at twenty nine k. We had another one at like thirty four k, and we could see those coming. We yep. were, we were ready for those. On this occasion, it was just so much more subtle. And it just is like, oh, right, okay, we're going to squeeze again. <laughs> so so they're, they're, yeah, clearly evolving again with the, the strategies being used and everything in order to... Definitely. Yeah, just just test this supply, like test test to see if there's demand down here and then uh, 
get a big move up out of it. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, just going to have a look on the chat as well. Um, I was going to say that the footprint chart <clears throat> for what's happened recently has been really interesting as well. Um, you d you just use profile, don't you? So more than uh, I footprint. well, what I do is uh, I'll yeah, I don't really look at footprint charts mm. and the dot and like the depth of market because it hurts my eyes. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, like, yeah, pull it up. Let me get rid of this. I'll I'll get yeah, off I'll... your screen. Hang on. Nah, it's cool. I'll, uh, yeah. Um, I need to do this again. All right, cool. That's there. So this is the again the same move that we were looking at and we covered the one we covered one that we had earlier on um before this i think we covered this one with you back yeah down here we had this big move down oh yeah uh, before the last short squeeze and then taking out the lows and then getting a massive move up but this is the one that we had more recently and again it's that same kind of thing you can just see how we we're, we're looking like fairly neutral across the board like whilst we're up in this range doing just okay we'll have some positive delta candles some negative de delta candles and overall the cvd on this when you look at a full range is pretty flat and suddenly things get really aggressive and it racks up again like almost well at one stage like over a billion dollars worth of negative delta on the way down here yeah <clears throat> yeah they're buying yeah. Yeah, without price moving that much, which Exactly, is, and that's yeah. how you buy that's how you build size. Mm -hmm. Because what you do is they call this running a box. Yeah. So the box is right there that balance range that you've got. And they every time somebody tries to 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 buy the market higher, you slap them down. Mm -hmm. And then you just keep absorbing into the, your bid. Yeah. Um you know. And then and, as well, every time it seems to take a low, it's like like you say the the selling just shuts off. So you come does, down here yeah. and it just disappears. And then you come yeah. down again, take another low. The, exactly. The exactly. Just disappears. Yeah. Come down here. Yeah, disappears. Just, the, the supply just runs out <laughs> yeah. because, you know, there it's, yeah, it's quite an amazing, you know, it's really cool seeing crypto on uh, with this level of detail. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really interesting because you could, if you know a little bit about how they work things, yeah. Um, you know, you can keep, keep your head on, on your shoulders. Yeah. But it's the hardest. That's the hardest thing about oh, weekend man. trading, right? Because you you really don't know what the hell's going on when you first start in, right? Yeah, especially with a yeah. market as volatile as this. It's <laughs> one of the difficulties I have with the uh, the crypto market is because there's not a centralized exchange. You have multiple data feeds, mm -hmm. so trying to keep track of multiple because you don't know where. I mean, these guys could be playing on any exchange, yeah, and they do play on multiple exchanges, and they, sometimes they pick them not. Yes. Them, not so common exchanges to do their business. So less yeah. people notice what they're doing. Like if from this particular move from the lows, we had 200 million in market buys coming off uh, OKX. Every, every 10 seconds, it was, it was one Bitcoin, one Bitcoin, one Bitcoin. Yeah. That's how they moved yeah. the market straight up. So they, yeah. filled, they, they filled the limits and then they just ripped the market up with the 200 million. Uh, that's yeah, you can see all of the... See, there's the stop run, right? There's the stop run right there. Look how thin it is where mm. they run the stops. Oh. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Look how thin that bad. is, right? Yeah. That is like, that's just beautiful. That is a picture-perfect textbook stop run. And, and there you, you know? go. It's just above that high as well. So right? there yeah, is it's, the change of market get, structure. Just yeah, you get the single sprints, through. right? And again, and, here. Yeah, and then again. Like, yeah. Look at that structure, right? Mm. You know, that looks like a giraffe walking backwards up a ladder. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, that is not good market structure, right? That's not how, that's not how Morgan Stanley and Goldman Sachs trade, right? Okay. You know, that's like, you know, uh, you know, Tommy two times and Lenny. That's those, you know, that's, that's sort of Jersey shore trading, right? <laughs> yeah. So uh, VWAP Fib was asking, using market profile, how do you personally look for targets to close logs, take profits? I look for the next stop. So if I am long something, I'll look to see if it can take the other upper stops. If it can't take the upper stops, by the time we get up there, I'm out. Thank you. Right. And same thing. If I'm short and we can't take the lower stops, then I'm out because we, I know we don't have supply. Yeah. So in this instance, it's probably, well, 
we're looking yeah stops up here stops down here and exactly. on, in this case here coming down on where are we here on this one these letters are so small the ends yeah exactly so hit, here's the stops know, and there's the yeah, single print right, so the, right get into exactly it. So, exactly yeah. because the those single prints it, that box is like a box full of buyers <laughs> that can't get filled yeah right because that's where the short position is yeah and they're so desperate at this point to get out that we're at this point 50 dollars above it before it front runs it by exactly they front run it it's yeah. like in Florida, if you're canoeing and you hold a chicken over your canoe, the alligators will jump up and grab it, right? <laughs> yeah. So that's what, you know, that's what you're kind of thinking of. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, yeah, it's that similar kind of thing with it up. It's great, isn't it? Like profiles in, like amazing because you, you can get so much information out of it because even just, just the data that we've got here, this C... Uh, period taking out the the v highs <clears throat> you come up and into d period what happens yeah. you just come up to the a and you yeah. just you just test it you just test your initial yeah. balance there before moving on higher yeah. you come back up here and then you get something that takes out so you're just going highs highs higher low higher low higher low all the way up and then this j candle the j period yeah. your favorite yeah. my Take, favorite yeah. <laughs> it takes out the i and then you get a little yeah. bit of a correction off of it so definitely i, I was gonna say i see um the nereo o2 he goes am i the only one who struggles with all the strategies and data inputs it gets confusing pretty quick i try <laughs> to focus on one thing but it also means a standstill in the learning curve i completely agree with you 100 mm. percent because when i started doing this on the retail side you gotta remember i've been doing this since 1993 i've been in the business but i only did retail after 2012 right after I, you know, basically died and had to find something to do that was like a little less stressful. Yeah. So I started looking at this and people said, you got to look at this, then you got to look at this, then you got to look at this. And there was so much information. I couldn't figure out what the hell to do. Mm -hmm. So that's why I found market structure and started using what I knew in the business, which is what really moves price is inventory. Inventory is everything, right? And, um, you know, it's just, uh, you know, it, it's one of those things that, that people don't really get told about. Right. Um, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> you know, I would see what he's writing about being cheap. I, I, I always say I'm cheap too. That's why I, I hate giving up. I hate, uh, using big stops, but, <laughs> uh, you know, cause I don't like giving to Citadel. But the thing is, uh, you know, that it took me a long time. So, you know, give yourself a break and uh, try and learn it in chunks, right? And be kind to yourself and remember that trading is a marathon, yeah. right? Uh, it's not a sprint. It's hard, to, it's hard to think about it that way. But just remember, any kind of skill takes time to learn. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of information and just try and if you try and get a few simple things, where am I, where's the inventory, right? Is the market long or is it short at this point in time? Yeah. You know, if it's overly long, I might think about shorting. And if I'm thinking about shorting, is there any supply? If it's really, really short and the supplies run out, I should be looking to get long because the market's going to look trade higher looking for supply. Mm -hmm. It's all about supply and demand but really look for supply, yeah. right? Supply is everything. If there's supply, we can short. If there's no supply, there's no short. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because, you know, if think about this, what is a short seller? A short seller is a future buyer, mm -hmm. right? So if you're shorting in an area where nobody who actually owns it is interested in selling it, where the hell are you going to get a cover? Yeah. Right. I mean, just think about it really simply, right? I'm selling something I don't own at a price where nobody who actually owns it is even thinking about selling it. So where the hell am I going to cover it cheaper if nobody actually sells it? Yeah. You know, uh, it, because remember before all of this fancy software and everything we had, these guys would trade under a tree flashing hand signals, Right. It's it's not really that sophisticated, mm. <laughs> you know. I, I think that's 
that's a, a big thing as well is that everyone talks about so the fact bitcoin and, and es did it as well goes through a major correction and the first thing that people are looking to do as soon as you get a bounce out of that correction like we were at we were at 29k like what three weeks ago um and people have been selling it all the way up but you've got to think to yourself like for these who was buying at 29k like the big yeah. money we're buying at 29k are they going to be selling it again at 36 no exactly <laughs> they're not gonna otherwise why would you buy it there you'd, you'd let it go down lower and and you'd wait for it to go again lower down if, if you want to sell it at 36k wait for it to go down to 18 or something like that so you can get a 2x out of it or something and make double your money and that's that's the issue with like a lot of retail traders is that very very keen to short very keen to long any move small move down after like a massive move up <clears throat> i'm very keen to short any small move up after a massive move down and it's we're getting to that stage now where i think 50k if you'd been long at, at 29 and yeah, maybe you'd look to take a bit of profit at this point but yeah. <laughs> it's still yeah it's exactly what you say like the supply and demand thing you've got to kind of think what like the bigger the bigger players are doing in that case yeah and and, and people are asking how to look at supply if you just hand me the screen i'll show you yeah sure it's it's really um if you look if you just start thinking about um inventory right and people are like what the hell is inventory well inventory is used in two different contexts uh wholesale market makers have an inventory it's like a storeroom where they keep their product right mm -hmm. and then we are also a part of inventory right so it is tactical very very tactical so what we're doing with this thing is now here's tesla right right for example here's tesla yeah and if you look at inventory if, as soon as i see this chart i see all of these people from 695 to 728 are trapped mm -hmm. right the market went up like everyone who's trapped in this area the market went up here and here but did everybody who is long in this area, did they get to sell up here? No. So when there's no upside, the market will come back in and it takes out that swing low, right? Then what it does is here's the short position in Tesla, yep. right? That's why the market holds itself up here. Now, if there's further selling, and there should be because there's all these days of people trapped, it's going to come down then it's going to put in sort of a B profile and then back up. So this is basically inventory being cleaned out. Yeah. Right. And then the market goes back up. It's just, and now if there's more selling, it'll come back down here. If there isn't, it will go back up here. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's, uh, you know, these sorts of things, are really, really cool to see when you, you know, you can take a look at any stock and say, you know, where's the inventory, right? Uh, what's it doing? What do you guys like to trade? Like coin, right? Um, <laughs> right. I mean, I, I bought, uh, I bought coin on it on, on the opening day. And I'm down oh like, no. Okay. I just, okay. It was, Here's it's the, a collector's item. It's, no, no, it's a, okay. No, listen, listen, yeah. if they still had stock certificates, that'd be fine. I'd buy one share. Yeah. But here's the thing. Okay coin look at look at the coin <laughs> look at the coin ipo they yeah. filed something called an s8 right anybody who trades stocks you guys better know what this is mm -hmm. okay right that if you see that in a filing that's free stock free zero yeah zero right so their s8 filing is larger than uh, their SB2 or whatever they filed to take the company public. Right. So they filed to sell more shares of free stock than the investors actually own. Yeah. Right? Now, yeah, S8 they, they stock is, is for employees and consultants. Yeah. Right? So these people just got a whole bunch of free stock. They filed at the same time they filed their S1, which is the registration offering to allow the people who invested in the company to allow them to sell their stock into the open market. That's called an S1 registration. The S8 is an employee benefit plan. Mm. So you pay consultants with that. Now, how I know what S8 paper is, 
is because I've been given that's free stock. Like yeah. if I do like a company would call me and say, Hey, JJ, somebody's shorting my stock. Can you figure out who's screwing around with it? Right. I'll go. Sure. And they'll give you, look, guys will go, look, I'll give you 500,000 shares. Uh, you know, the stock's 30 cents, you know, here's half a million shares. Uh, give me a hand. And, and, and listen, if you need more stock, just ask, I'll give you a million shares. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Right. Right. So I, I never paid for stock for 20 years. Right. That's why when people would go, Oh, do you trade penny stocks? I'm like, no, why, buy, why would you buy that crap? You get it for free. <laughs> right. Like, why would I buy something that people will give it me? Like they'll give me a million shares of a 50 cent stock for free. Yeah. Why the hell would I buy it? Right. Yeah. So that's what S8 stock is, but it's scary to see that in these big companies because these people are all cashing out and having a wonderful summer. Mm. They finally cleaned it up a little bit, but um, you know, it, it just trapped all the longs off the opening. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I think with, with Coinbase as well, because they, they didn't have like a, a pre-sale before uh, going public. So they're, they're, I think their valuation, Senti, I think you probably know a bit more about this. Um, yeah. I haven't researched it so much, but I know their employees were under some, the stock that they got was under some kind of embargo, but they could trade a percentage of it. Yeah. No, they could sell. No, the, was the it... stock was completely, they could they could dump oh, it as soon oh, as the IPO oh, opened. It was that's, allowed. That's but it. they gave yeah. quite a substantial, I think they gave about 10K to each employee, which is a nice bonus if you're mm -hmm. an employee, right? Uh, yeah, that's the S8. It's free. Yeah, it's but free, see, exactly. But the, the, the problem with S8 is it's, it's always abused, right? Yeah. So you'll see the CEO has a mistress. She's a consultant, right? And all of a sudden, she's driving a new BMW convertible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come on. I'm not going to lie, you guys. I mean, this is the real world, okay? It's that's why, you know, that, that's why you always have to, if you're a shareholder in these public companies, you have to keep these people on their toes. Yeah. Otherwise, these bastards, you know, you ever heard of Bernard Ebers, right, from WorldCom? This yeah. guy was buying $13,000 shower curtains with shareholder money, <laughs> right? I mean, come on. Yeah. You know, he bought a, like a $10,000 umbrella stand, right? Yeah. You know, because they're just printing stock and it's just free. Yeah. Right? Well, the valuation was crazy in itself. Yeah. I think they valued they valued the IPO at a hundred billion, which is the most stupidest thing in the world. Mm. You know, uh, the main issue I see uh, with Coinbase particularly is as it exchange, all of its like ninety eight percent of its revenue comes from the exchange fees, right? But and the yeah. exchange fees are so high. So as crypto develops, you're going to get a lot more people coming onto the scene who build exchanges, which much lower fees so mm -hmm. they would never be able to you know hold that valuation because they would exactly. never be able to generate because there's going to be more competition yeah. in the scene Definitely. yeah that's a fundamental issue with coinbase that's why if you see coinbase nowadays they're trying to diversify into other things to make to create additional revenue streams mm -hmm. well, i think that's the thing they get they're going to want to be uh they're competing with robin hood and and things like that soon aren't they i i, I think and yeah, if so, you compare it to the equity markets, right, the fees that Coinbase charge are just ridiculous. Like, absolutely, mm -hmm. you wouldn't, it's nowhere near what you see in the equity market, right? Yeah. It's well, because exactly. they're, they're yeah. just, it's because they're a monopoly at the moment. It's, yeah. Crypto is like, crypto is like 1921. You know, they're charging you like an eighth spread if you're not using, you know, limit orders. Steroids. And, you know, it's, <laughs> it's great. I love that, man. I wish I owned a firm or something in this time. You could, they're just, oh, you'd be milking it. Yeah. They're just yeah. milking money out of people, right? It's it's like it yeah. with crypto as well because we have uh <clears throat> have these things like every time someone creates a coin, it's just a it's just a way to just mint your own money. Like people will just pay a a fortune just to own something that doesn't exist, and mm. as soon as it gets listed on exchange, it's like, oh yeah, great, we'll just dump this on everyone that's bought it. All our investors, we'll just dump it on them. <laughs> It's a uh, yeah, crypto is like you get these IPOs, uh, initial, oh no, I ICOs, uh, initial yeah, coin offerings. Coin offerings. Yeah, and it's it's just mad. We've seen it the same with um with NFTs and things as well. People just being able to mint, just like oh yeah, like yeah. you can just scribble have you heard something of on NFTs, a page. JJ. Oh, just oh yeah, we, we, in in my trading room we have an NFT room. Uh, oh, no way. Our guys were probably one of the first guys in NFTs. They, um, 
they had the, the one of the best cost averages uh, and also the digital horse racing thing. Oh, uh, nice. oh yeah yeah we were all real i mean i don't touch that stuff because i don't know enough about it but uh like my my partner ray in the room mm. you know he started the digital horse thing and i think he was in for 1500 2000 bucks that stable's worth like almost 30 grand now yeah. um you know and then we had uh, one of the guests on the podcast uh was one of these guys and he paid he paid forty thousand dollars for like each for two of these racehorses you know was that was so, that mark cuban when he had him uh, on then uh no uh, i don't know if cuban, cuban mark's doing that yet but, <laughs> he's uh, dabbling isn't he he's, he's, he's dabbling. into everything man you know? <laughs> yeah. uh, what i'm showing you is uh, amd sorry guys somebody asked for an amd chart that's why i was mm. drawing this thing up so amd luckily what's holding amd up is a nice short position right a nice juicy short right mm -hmm. these profiles here when it broke over 92 people followed price down here and they shorted it and you know these profiles are very 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 showing that the uh that the supply is drying up right this is one time framing trend up this adjusts inventory and then a rip on this inventory rip what happened was um momentum traders following price shorted here now they're stuck and they are stuck under here under here and under here. So when the market sells off, it comes into that short position and that's why it's bouncing off of these levels, right? Yeah. Um, I don't know where, I don't, there's no place for me to paste this chart. I'm trying to paste it, but I guess you can't paste it in, uh, in YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> you know? If you, I think everyone watching is is on our Discord. If you wanted to paste oh, it into yeah, the yeah, Zoom, yeah, then sure. I can paste it into the Discord if you like, or yeah. if if you're happy to do, do that, I can. Yeah, yeah. How do yeah. I do that? Do I put it in the chat? Yeah, yeah. If you've got a link to it in in the chat here on Zoom, then I can then uh, put that over into possibly. I, I'm not sure if that will work. If you maybe I'm trying you to share, will share give you a link, or oh, I don't know. Oh, you can no, put I'm it into sure. box. We've got a box server. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll figure no, this I mean, out. Right? Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> right. <clears throat> but yeah, this is, so what's going on is these people are trapped and the, and the market is slowly fading down. And, uh, you know, once you take a swing short out, you get a little bit of selling, you know, so that, that's, you just kind of want to watch and see uh, yeah. whether or not, you know, you can, um, I have to add you on discord oh i still haven't done that oh okay <laughs> discord yeah well discord discord yes yes not i'm trying to put the chart in zoom jesus i'm having a gym. it's it's Hang fine on, I'm, I'm having a i'm having a jim dalton moment stay with me i i just we, we we've been beaten to it i i just i'd literally just done a screen share of your oh, okay. share screen oh, okay. i've done All it right. but, but money badger uh one of our members is has uh beaten us to it and he's put a he's put the chart into into our chat so <laughs> there we go it's been ripped <laughs> we've been ripped off the internet and uh and screenshotted and cool. it's there now it's there cool. for everyone to see <laughs> yeah, good stuff. Yeah. yeah, so structure the structure of these markets will tell you where the short position is, where the supply is, right? It's amazing the amount of of information that structure will tell you. Mm. Uh, you know, it it in the ES especially uh, the, on this last sell off, right? Well, where was it? Down here, right? The market sold off, and here we had a poor low. At yep. this poor low, that double bottom mm -hmm. said that the supply was it, that we were done. And uh, and when I saw that double bottom, I said, uh-oh, if that holds, this thing's going to rip. And <laughs> it got over 42.57. I said, 42.57, 43.17. Next day, boom, it's there. Yeah. 43.17, 43.77, boom. Two days later, it's there. So this whole market is being held up by a short position underneath here, mm. right? And look how high the market went. It went to new highs. That's why the structure, I'll, yeah. I'll always love that. As much as I love candles, you really can't see that on a candle right away. I mean, you can if you look for it and dig deep. Yeah. But yeah, uh, sure. in, in, in this charting, it's just very, very quick, you know? Yeah. Okay. How uh tiger how the hell do i send a request in discord what do i do okay 
you guys have all these all this software doesn't anyone use aol instant messenger anymore just joking, <laughs> just joking right um <laughs> Now, if I could only figure out the software. Cool. Yeah. Right. So anyway. All the, uh, all, all, all the cool kids hang out on Discord. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. All right Don't I'm worry. Do we'll it. add you to MySpace afterwards. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Yeah. That's great. M- MSN Messenger. And, uh, He's a, I still yeah. don't know what fa- I still don't know what the hell Facebook does. You know? Oh, it's funny. <clears throat> yeah. I, oh, Facebook's awful. I haven't logged on to that thing for a long time. I'm not even, I'm not even on it, but I, you know, that is one stock chart that I have Mm -hmm. and not a single person asks me for a Facebook stock chart. Yeah. I've never, it is the least requested chart I ever, ever get. Like nobody even, I don't know. I don't know who (laughs) trades it. Yeah. It's weird. Um, I just seen a question uh from crypto bro uh but but is not poor low more indicated that we revisit of this area so i'm gonna quickly, ah, great yeah, question yeah great question i right? i keep saying this to people that, as well and it means it's always like it doesn't have to guys it doesn't have but it, to it's it, a, <laughs> ah, but see if it doesn't yeah right if it doesn't that tells us a huge amount of information mm-hmm. like right? today right so i'll uh so I just do the screen share with you again and we can, because I, I just want, because we had it today. Right. <laughs> See, just because we have a poor load doesn't mean we're going to come back and revisit it. Mm-hmm. And if we don't, it tells you everything about the order flow of that day. Right. Yeah. The concept of a poor low, Sam, is it shows that selling shuts off very, very abruptly. Right. Like, There'll be like 10,000 contracts or 10,000 shares or whatever for sale. And that order just gets sold out, sold out. And then all of a sudden, boom, it's over. And there's no follow through selling mm. because in these markets, we don't have a lot of uh, what they call other time frame selling, you know, uh, people who hold for, see, most of this market moves, not because somebody's buying it, you know, like in the old days, somebody would buy like 10 shares of IBM. And then they'd hold that for their grandchildren, right? That yeah. doesn't happen anymore. The big companies have a billion shares of Apple. They're not selling it. The rest of this market is just people who have a lot of money and a lot of credit pushing prices around and using these structures, right? Because there are prop traders out there who will use be on crypto or ES. And what they'll do is they'll put a position together and they'll be short like, I don't know, 20,000 ES contracts at 44.53. And then what they'll do is when the market jams down, they'll cover those contracts on the way down and, you know, and they'll have a 20, $30 million month, right? So those are the people who are playing around now. There's also guys who lose 20 or $30 million mm. in a month, right? And that's what's creating this, these huge ranges that we're having in all of these markets that have quite frankly become quite disconnected from reality. They're great for us trading, but um, getting married to this stuff, you know, is kind of scary, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, because everybody's trading on credit. And one of these days, you know, what I'm scared about is the leverage, right? Mm-hmm. What I'm really scared about is guys like Bill Wang from Archegos, right? Um, and he, he, I mean, he, he blew up $30 billion in a day. Yeah. Right. And now he's walking around New Jersey, like whistling Dixie, like nothing ever happened. Right. You know, he disappeared for a month and now he's like just walking around Jersey. Right. Uh, $30 billion vanishes into thin air. Uh, You know, and those guys, uh, I I really think the liquidation two days ago in the ES was caused by somebody getting sold out who got stopped out. Um, Mm. Do I have any favorite trading books? Uh, First of all, reminiscence of a stock operator. I love. Uh, another one is, um, is, uh, what's his name? Let me just stay with me one sec here. Okay. Uh, biddy, William Worthington Fowler. It's called inside life in wall street. Right. It's a wonderful book. It's written in 1873. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, and it is one of the best written books 
you'll ever read. It details things like the Harlem Railroad short squeeze Mm -hmm. and how Vanderbilt did it. It's fascinating. I mean, Tesla was done exactly 100 years after the Stutz automotive short squeeze, Mm -hmm. right? So history, interestingly enough, repeats itself. Yeah. Yeah, what what Elon's doing, he definitely... uh... He definitely reads this stuff, knows exactly what he's doing, and oh, that guy, we, you know, he we that boy having, just, uh, yeah, he did not just fall off the turnip truck. That not point. at all, yeah. Okay, you know, we were having this conversation, I think, a few, a couple of months ago now. I think when everything was happening with Elon and how there's the whole, uh, the Chinese proverb of the story of the the bull and the rat, and how the rat takes over the bull. Um, hops on the bull's back and takes over the whole show and arrives at the party first or something like that. It, it feels like that's that's exactly what Elon's done here because 2021 is the year of the bull in um, in the Chinese uh, yeah. calendar. And uh, it, it feels like it's that exact thing. It's like Elon's kind of gone, you know what? It's the year of the bull. Bitcoin's in a bull market. What can I hop on the back of? Get a load of exposure for Bitcoin. And he's just exactly. just jumps right on the back of it, and he's oh, he's yeah. the one that's in the news, not not Bitcoin. Exactly, it's, uh, it's what Elon's doing. It doesn't matter exactly. if Bitcoin's in a bull run or correcting. Yeah. It's all about what uh, what Elon's doing, and um, have, and, and the rat, I... the rat jumping on the back of the bull. <laughs> have you have any of you ever seen the movie The Hudsucker Proxy? Tim <laughs> Robbins, Paul Newman. I'm not sure. No. Every time the, right. I, I'm not good with film titles. So okay. whenever you say them, I'm like, I may have done. Right. I don't know. <laughs> right. It's it's an old film for you yeah. guys because you guys are all young. But basically, Elon Musk got the idea for the Tesla short squeeze from that mm. because he went on the Joe Rogan show, smoked a joint. Everybody <laughs> thought he was nuts, and yeah. they shorted the stock. He had Bailey Gifford buy all of that, put it in a warehouse, and then they just jammed it. Yeah. Right. And it, the movie is exactly that. They hire a guy who everybody thinks he's an idiot, put him in as CEO <laughs> to make the stock go down, to yeah. get everybody to sell the stock. And then the board of directors buys it all back to regain control of the company. Yeah. Right. But it, it's, it's such a good movie and it's, it's very popular because, you know, I'm in that Elon Musk age group. Yeah. So uh, yeah, take, take a, uh, take a look at that film. It's a great film. It's really well done too. Yeah, definitely. I definitely will. Yeah, John Snow is Elon a market maker? Oh, he he absolutely. He's a market is. mover. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, he, he he's probably he's not trading it, but yeah, he's uh he's definitely got people that are trading it for him. For, for oh sure. yeah, you and, know, uh, and he just and it's great because yeah. there's there's no seventeen B, there's no front running, there's no F, there's no FBI. That you can do whatever the hell you want. Yeah. In crypto, there's no rules, mm. right? So it's like the wild west, you know, if you have money and sophistication at this time in the world, um, the opportunities here are just crazy, Mm. you know, with these markets, the liquidity. Yeah. You know? Yeah, for sure. I just want to, I'm going to, I'm going to rewind slightly onto the um, poor low and poor high thing Mm -hmm. um, that people were saying. And just, just as a little extra explanation off of that and kind of what what my thought of that is um and maybe you can chip in it um and kind of give your <laughs> insight as well onto this but for me it's like so many people there's there's this big misconception that if you've got a poor low for example that price has to come back down there and clean that up and and yes sometimes it's going to do that if we're in a ranging market you would expect price probably to go and clean that up but if things are trending and you get a poor low that a poor low in this case like we've kind of had them the last two days not so much there's a little bit of excess here there's a little bit of excess here but not very mm-hmm. much okay so it's not i wouldn't call it a poor low i wouldn't call it a <laughs> a good one either oh, um, but but it's it's that kind of thing that like exactly like you were saying it doesn't it doesn't have to revisit it just because you put in a poor low or you have a low that's on on very low volume or you have a low with very little excess you don't have yeah. to come back and clean that up it just shows to shows that again there's no there's supply. no desire yeah there's no supply there's no desire to right. push the market down yeah the, there's no there's no supply and mm. uh the other thing about the poor low sorry for interrupting Look how wide those points of control are, right? So, if, like, go back to that one, like, right here. Mm-hmm. See how wide that point of control is? Like, just go to the profile, the orange part, 
right? Yeah. Look how oh, wide right, that right. is. That's a position. Yeah. That's the position of 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 the of the of the folks with the big wallets, mm-hmm. right? That's the position. And now look where they're selling that position. Yeah. They're holding the market above forty six thousand to sell. Yeah. And right? there's. Yeah, exactly. And it, it's the same with um, with single prints and things like that as well. Is we we get this same kind of. <sighs> thought that okay if single prints are made on the way up the price has to come down and immediately fill them and it, it gets people mm-hmm. off guard so much and i, I well, that's that's this. the thing about be, and, having rules yeah you've because, got to be open-minded yeah because you would think okay single prints at some point they're like a gap it's likely to possibly well <laughs> likely it, to it, possibly it, exactly it's right? likely to fill at some point but the thing is the first we time don't you know. come in yeah, yeah. and the first Sorry. time you come into single prints if you're above it, for me, would be a long. I wouldn't be looking exactly. to short. I would be looking no, to exactly. long. That's, yeah. Exactly, right? Because that's where the shorts are buying. Mm. So if you want to buy, you want to buy above the people who are who are desperate to buy. Yeah. Because they'll push you up. Yeah. Right? And people and miss, they, they miss yeah. so many opportunities because they're well, like, oh, but they're single prints. We must come back and fill right? this. And yeah. VWAP Fib, Fib says context is king. Mm-hmm. And that's so true. What are the circumstances of what's going on? Has the market just hit poor lows or is it just bottomed out? And has everybody been buying for hours and hours and hours? It's if it cool. has, and then it starts to move higher, that poor low might be there for a bit. Yeah. It's and it's- same with ledgers as well. You can continue yeah. as them as well. Oh, it's just yeah. a position which is trapped. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. exactly. And, right. And you see it. You do see instances of it. Okay, so we did come up here on the 13th and you have a high up here with very little access. And price is just hovering at that point. And at that stage, you'd say, okay, price has come up here, created, uh, it's just hovering around this high. There's very little excess up here, mm-hmm. but but we're just range round at this point. It's not trending. It's not doing anything. And at that point, you would say, yeah, it's likely that we're going to clean this up. But it's when you see these trending moves, in, in my experience anyway, if you do see a trending move, you don't, you don't have to clean up a poor high or a poor low. It's just, um, it's a rule of one of many. <laughs> like there's, there's so many ways, ways to trade it. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's the amazing thing down here, poor low. I mean, the, you've got a What I've noticed access, is but... if you have multiple days with poor lows and uh, or poor highs, then uh, I, there's, the high, there's a higher probability of those to get cleaned up. Mm-hmm. But if you have one, one or the other, then it, that speaks for itself. Yeah. Again, that's that kind of, if you're there for a few days, then it's going to be range bound aren't we so like here you're spending a few days within this same range and eventually cleans it up and then some and Mm -hmm. you you come back above you just search above where these these poor highs are and then it comes straight back down because you've cleaned it up you've done what you wanted to do and then continue as normal and i do look at it much more as yeah range bound behavior and and as opposed to trending kind of markets Good stuff. Uh, <laughs> so, oh boy, so what's next? <laughs> yeah, what, what do what, we talk what? about next? I mean, no, uh, just, yeah. just looking in the in the chat. It's always fascinating these conversations. It's great to have. Uh, <clears throat> again, I went. I, I, I was gonna... in this chat room last night. Oh my god, it was a trip. It was like so many of these, and they were all really, really young people. It was, and they were typing so fast. The chat was like just spinning. Mm-hmm. It was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. We'll, uh, I'm just going to look. Okay. I'm going to do a little plug. We're at 44 likes. This is, this is poor. We had 150 likes when I streamed yesterday. So let's get this up. <laughs> let's get the likes up. <laughs> Smash up the likes. Um, and then I'm going to, I've got to do my YouTube thing. I always forget to do that. And, um, what else have we got he's asking in the chat if anyone else has any other questions or if anyone would like to join in on the conversation i notice uh tactical analysis is in is in the youtube um so tactical analysis is another really like actually really inspiring story so if you do want if you fancy it um if any if you want to come on and and join the conversation jj and senti if you don't mind i'd be happy to open this up for a few more people um uh, absolutely yeah of yeah. course so tactical analysis is, is tj um within our community he's um 
been trading i think he was saying for about a year um and just had like the most amazing trading journey done done in about a year what it takes most traders about five years to do and it's just through hard work and dedication on on just learning and like really like really nice. really absorbing as much information as you can so it'd be great to to get some to get him on if he would like to of course um and anyone else who is on the uh anyone in the discord or with a crew member or anyone watching the youtube if you'd like to join in on the conversation for a little bit this evening then just drop me a message and i can send you the link yeah you've been killing it uh recently jj on twitter been following you <laughs> oh man I'm so, i'm so bad at twitter i really need to up my twitter game badly I think... <laughs> I first heard of you, JJ, and I brought you to the attention of this community when I watched the Stocks to Trade YouTube channel. Oh, yeah, those guys are great. Yeah, yeah and I think it was one of the best videos I've ever seen. If, if, if nobody's yeah. seen it before, you, you have to check it out. I think it's their most popular video as well. Would you say that was the video that you blew you up? What do you think you were? Um, I think so. Yeah, there's the Steve and Ray really work on a lot of stuff. That that really brought a lot of people uh, to me. Uh, the other thing was the whole GME thing. Um, I got yeah. a ton. I got like ten thousand followers when I started posting levels on GME and AMC. Uh, just they just just came barreling in. Uh, it was crazy. Um, TJS said the other, looking for poker. And then, yeah, so that that's been good. You know those. And, you know, you guys have, have brought me a lot of attention because I never would have gotten into crypto if my girlfriend hadn't pushed me into it, <laughs> uh, you know, because, you know, she's like, go, go. And I'm like, oh, I don't know this thing. I don't know. I don't know. I need a wallet, a money clip. Uh, you know, they need a fanny pack to hold this thing. I don't know what the hell this is. Right. <laughs> and she's like, just go, go, go. You're not doing anything at night. Go. So I did it. And, uh, you know. I get all my trading ideas from her because she's a pure retail trader, right? Um, and that's what I, it helps me teach because my whole thing is uh, when I started teaching, I was like, well, you know, inventory is short. You got to do this. You know, now they're fading the bid. This people are like, what are you talking about? I'm like, what do you mean? You should know this stuff, right? You know, T plus two is here. If we break T plus two, we'll get margin calls and stray order flow. They're like, whoa, what does all that mean? I'm like, what do you mean? You guys don't know what this means? Right. So then I had to like start because I was a, a good institutional trader. It took me a long time to become a retail trader because that takes discipline. And then it took me a while to learn how to explain this stuff. Right. Uh, you know, because I'd be like, well, what do you mean you don't know what inventory is? Right. Yeah. Teaching so, is another kettle yeah, of fish. Yeah. No, it's a completely, it's, it's, it's different, you know? <laughs> so she, she's like, you know, people need to learn about that. I'm like, why? They should know that. She's like, just trust me. Right. And uh, it, it's, it's, it, she's for the reason. She's actually the reason why things have really gone, you know, ever since she came into my life about a year ago. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's great. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Cause she's one of those cool kids who trades off a cell phone, you know? So, you know, <laughs> it, it's so nice that you can just have apps that you can take trades off these days as well. It's, oh, yeah. It's great. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Couldn't imagine trading off a cell phone. Like, I just couldn't see it. I, I can't. I, I just, you know, for me, it's not. Uh, I'll do it. Know, especially big, with big size. Yeah. There's no way I could trade big size yeah. for a mobile phone. That's yeah. insane. Yeah. You know, but she, she trades. She trades the ES, you know. And uh, she's really good because like she'll be trading on the on the subway trade to like hospital in the morning, you know, because she's she's an anesthesiologist. So she, you know, oh, she she's got one of the it. best teachers. So. Yeah, but, you know, she's it's quite amazing. Well, she's got two PhDs, so she's a hell of a lot smarter than I am. Right? <laughs> I'm, I'm just an old eye gouger. Right. But, uh, you know, yeah. So but she she comes up with all these mathematical formulas and I'm like, oh, just just hit the bid, honey. You know, it's like poke him in the eye and hit the bid, you know. <laughs> so it's good because I learned a lot. Being open minded when you're older really helps. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. We've just had TJ's just joined us. So uh, I'll see if he's connected. Welcome, welcome. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, man, how how's it going? 
good. Let me, uh, I'm trying to figure out how to turn down the, uh, the YouTube thing. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've got a screen share going on on here as well. So everything, uh, everything that actually, am I still sharing my screen or am I not? Yeah, I am on zoom. So everything that's going on on the YouTube, you'll be able to see as well. Is this, is this the guy who was the professional poker player? Uh, not professional. I was never a professional, but I, I play every day pretty much um, for a while now. But yeah, I'm the Where one. You that hustled us all out of money. Huh? I said you hustled us all out of money. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did. I did. No, no. This is. I'm no, not that... the one that played. Uh, I'm TJ from poker. Uh, ah, yeah. okay, okay. TJ didn't win. I finished, was... I finished third. I didn't win. Yeah. Uh, okay. It was a good game though. It was good fun. Yeah, you got was, me. Uh... Uh, in the first game, you got me with that king on the river though. You put me out in the first. Oh, round. you're the guy that knocked me out, right? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I remember that. We went head yeah. to head. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I just um basically uh TJ, I just wanted to <clears throat> as I saw you on the chat and um it's these these Friday streams are often just just general discussion really and just just kind of hanging out and I was so for anyone who I'm sure everyone most people within here know TJ obviously from from being active within uh the the Taurus community as well but TJ does have his own channel his own YouTube channel and it's basically just sharing your journey isn't it like um through trading as as a as a more i guess like slightly less experienced trader but like really kind of knowing and really diving into just as much technical analysis and really kind of taking everything seriously and i was watching your stream the other day and it was yeah inspiring to hear your story and just to hear how far you've you've come in a, in the space of a year so yeah i thought i'd get you get you on yeah, today cool. and, and just yeah, yeah just I, have a general chat as well so. yeah i appreciate it. i start like like you said i started out in um i started out in january just spot trading mm -hmm. um you know, so the channel kind of came about, I was, you know, we had a group of people chatting, there was another telegram from a different channel. And, um, you know, I actually almost didn't even speak up and share and start, um, you know, sharing charts and my input. Um, glad I did. And it just kind of evolved. And as I was evolving as a trader, people started to just kind of gravitate towards the way I was seeing price action and charts. And then, you know, it slowly grew into this, you know, little community. And then I, I started making some videos just to kind of explain what I was, what I was posting, because I was, you know, posting charts, real time charts, like every two minutes for 18 hours a day for everybody and explaining everything. And, you know, it just kind of grew into a channel. It's still kind of surreal to go from, yeah. uh, you know, just chatting with everybody to having my own kind of platform and channel. But um, yeah, I just started out in January spot trading, thought I was good. It was, uh, you know, I didn't know anything about the bull runs and the bear runs or anything about crypto in general, really. I just, I happened to have a Coinbase from a uh, from a year ago before, before COVID happened. And, uh, I, uh, I, I put some money in it to, there was a site that offered Bitcoin as a, as a payment option. I thought it was cool. So I just, uh, I put some money in there. I never ended up using it. And then I opened up the wallet when I transferred the app on, uh, on my cell phone and I had like 1200 bucks in there. And I obviously I researched into where the money came from and saw that it was just profits from, from having money just sitting in there. And uh, from that point on, I decided to, to, to look into what this is, what the markets are. And again, I started with, uh, with just a spot account. And I thought I was like the best trader in the world because I was mm -hmm. making money, but just trans converting from one coin to another, not realizing that price was just, just going up, you know, back in January, <laughs> prices were just skyrocketing. So, yeah. um, you know, then I wanted to get Cardano. That was a project that I believed in and, uh, you know, it was my favorite crypto and I, you know, I live in the US, so uh, Coinbase wasn't cutting it back then. So, you know, I got the VPN and, and, and got the exchange and then I was, you know, opened up to the world of leverage trading and, and uh, you know, I learned quickly that that is nowhere near the same as, uh, you know, hodling or whatever they call it or spot trading yeah. um you know and I, I lost my whole my whole spot portfolio um you know a good amount of almost ten thousand dollars um you know learned it the hard way mm. um in my process of of trying to discover the best way to trade and i just went from you know community view and i didn't have other channels at the time i didn't know about um back then i didn't know about discords or telegrams um, I was just, you know, I had a, a crappy old laptop that I, I, I was using for my stepson, like a hundred dollar Dell laptop that was freezing every five minutes. And, yeah. 
I, uh, you know, I just put in the time and went through the struggles on my own and, and found the best parts of all the different strategies that, you know, I found worked for me and I, I combined them into, you know, one little hybrid type strategy. And, um, you know, the rest is history. I just started growing and growing, grew my account back, got all that money back um, and then some. So, um, and, and out of that journey grew, um, grew the channel. So um, in the channel, you guys know, I have, have links for, for your channel, especially in the other channels that I learned from and, and grew from along the way in the channels that I still support. So, you know, that's what the community kind of evolved in as, uh, you know, a place where traders were open to discuss ideas from all different strategies. And, and, you know, a lot of the other communities out there, um, you know, limit people in the communities to only talk about what they teach or, only, you know, <laughs> only, you know, I'm not going to name any names of the communities, but, um, you know, it's, it feels like a, a limited atmosphere to learn and grow. So, um, yeah. you know, that's kind of what the community was built on was just people from all the different walks of life, all the different communities coming together in a place where they can learn, learn together and find out the best way to succeed together as a team. Um, you know, I'm ex-military, I served in Iraq, um, back in 2004 and 2005 so that was right out of high school I was 19 years old so you know that community and brotherhood and 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 that, that stuff type, type of stuff is ingrained in me so it's just you know it's, it's been a part of my personality I got hurt over there and um you know I don't have to work um you know I'm paid for life from the military so it, mm. it, it provided me the opportunity to really dive into the things I'm interested in and the market became that I'm very grateful yeah. for the opportunity to do what I've been doing. And now I'm just paying, trying to pay it forward to the new traders. So hopefully they don't have to go through the struggles, you know, to at least to the same degree. I think everybody has to go through those losses in the beginning um, mm -hmm. to really understand, you know, the, the concepts of the fear and the greed and, and um, you know, experience all those things for themselves to really, to really evolve as a trader. Maybe not, you know, not, maybe not everybody loses in the beginning. Um, I'm not sure of everybody's story, but it seems a, it, to resonate with other people um, that struggle in the beginning, wanting to quit, you know, a thousand times losing money. Just every time you open a trade, it goes in the other direction and then you close it, it goes back in your direction, like over and over again. So um, I just made the community. Um, it just evolved out of me trying to pay it forward and hopefully limiting that, you know, that stuff for the new trader. So hopefully it, it grows and I, and I can be helpful to people moving forward. Yeah, <laughs> it's a wholesome story. It, it really Very is nice. and that's yeah that's again mm -hmm. why yeah really why i wanted to to bring you on today because it, it just goes to show and i think so many people that start off trading you go through your ups and downs as a trader like i i've i've been through liquidations um i'm sure senti has i'm sure i'm sure jj has maybe when started I've, doing retail trading. he's probably liquidated more people <laughs> I, than I, he's I, probably yeah, the one liquidating yeah. us i've yeah. caused quite a few stop runs in my yeah time. yeah so um We've all gone through this stuff in, in various ways, and uh, and it, it's just a, a really I I just really kind of enjoyed, yeah, watching the stream that you did the other day, just going over your story, and a bit more detail, obviously, than you you did here just now, but um, just of yeah that journey that you've been on, and and showing that with with hard work and like actually spending time, just learning like really really learning how to read the charts and just absorbing yeah, price screen action. time is everything <laughs> yeah i tell everybody Watch, that watching order flow just every day and and just seeing seeing what happens with the charts like i say probably a good 90 95 of traders they just trade and they're not really actually caring about what's going on in the chart they're not reading the charts but if you can put in the time to really read and to really learn um and to um put in the the effort into to kind of finding what you want to do with the charts and again there's so many different ways to do it like jj's got uh an amazing yeah just style and a natural read of the markets from doing it for for such a long time <laughs> um, 29 years yeah, yeah. Wow. and then like myself senti coming kind of coming from i guess much less experienced than JJ but then more experienced than a lot of people coming in obviously this year and uh yeah there's so many different ways to trade it but if you yeah really really put the hard work into the education then you can yeah. get what you want from this market and that's that's yeah, there, we, there was a time I just uh I just uh, in the bridge between my um you know so so trading into coming into being successful um where I am now that bridge was I actually took like three or four weeks off and I just watch the one minute chart. Um, I trade with the PVA candles, um, you know, so that's a big part of my strategy, but I just watched mm -hmm. 
price move on the one minute chart with just the moving averages and the candles and just after seeing you know price behave in those key areas over and over and over and over again i mean i, I brought the laptop with me to the drive through to the restaurants family did everything <laughs> i was committed to this it's dedication you know, that's, that's that's a beautiful thing man that's, yeah. it is. that's i have a question I for you uh jj sure. actually um sure so you um uh I, well just for with you with the experience wise i I was wondering if, um, you know, 29 years experience in the market, if you have seen um, an evolution in the way the markets work at all, or, or do you feel it's it's kind of the same concepts just repeated over and over, like that there's not much change, or have you seen no, 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 um, it's, it's a major very, evolution? There's a very different type of market now that I've never, ever seen before. This is a really good question, because in the old days when we didn't have low interest rates, right? And we didn't have things like money managers like BlackRock and uh, Fidelity and those kinds of large firms. Um, you'd get more selling in a market. We have a market that is very, very illiquid now. The business model of the market changed very drastically in the last 20 years. We went from a commission-based business model to what we call an assets under management business model. So if you have a billion dollars in assets under management, you charge a 2% management fee per year, right? Yeah. That's some pretty good coin for sitting and doing nothing, right? So hedge fund managers, mutual fund managers, there's, they're paid to sit, right? It's 2 and 20, 2% of the, the assets under management, 20% of the profits, right? Okay. Now, so that 2% means if interest rates are low and stocks keep going higher and higher and higher, there's no reason to sell because you're limiting your income every year. Mm -hmm. So you're just like these big vacuum cleaners that gather assets. The problem is, right, the markets are very, 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 very liquid. Look at Microsoft today. It's up 2.5% on 44 million shares of trading. There are 7 billion shares in the float of Microsoft. Therefore, Microsoft is a very illiquid market, which means if you breathe on it the wrong way, it's going to collapse. If yeah. somebody decides to sell, right? Look at the look at the positions that Fidelity, uh, BlackRock, Vanguard have in Microsoft. Let's take a quick look at that, right? Just take two seconds. All we have to go to this very very secretive website called Yahoo Finance <laughs> that nobody's ever heard of. Oh, do you want me right? to to have a look? Um... Yeah, just take a look at Microsoft here. I'll have it in two seconds here. Yeah, Look at can... the stats, right? Do you want to Microsoft, the yeah, yeah. Microsoft yeah. has uh, it's it's just amazing how illiquid these markets are. Um, Microsoft has a float of seven and a half billion shares. Okay, the average daily volume is nineteen million shares. The holders of Microsoft, look how much stock they have. Right, these people are <laughs> holding it for thirty years. So you, the stock that these people own, it's in ETFs. I liken these people to like having all the stock in some sort of a crypt and it's covered in about five inches of dust right now, right? Mm -hmm. But what if, what if, right? What if something happened and somebody had to sell 25 million shares of Microsoft, 50 million shares of Microsoft in a two-day period? How the hell are they going to sell that kind of stock when it only trades 20 million shares a day? Apple. They wouldn't be able to. Yeah. No, they they would crush the market. If you tried to sell Apple's another one, right? There's 17 or 16 and a half billion shares in the float. Average daily volume, less than 1% of that. Look at the positions. Vanguard, 1.2 billion. BlackRock, these are billions of shares. There is no way they could sell this stock. They are so long that they cannot sell. So that has really changed in this market. This market has gotten to a point where it just keeps creeping higher and higher because people just keep getting loans against their portfolio instead of selling and incurring capital gains. Right? And you've got so, all this stock, which people can't sell anyway. So that's supply exactly. of the market. So, right. Yeah, that makes uh, sense. Right. So that's why the, that's why the S&P just went from 4377 to 4438 in one day. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's why the COVID crash that happened and I'll, I'll show you with a candle wax chart, mm. right? Right. This crash from 3,300 all the way to 2,200, this, none of those firms that I showed you sold any Apple or Microsoft or any of those companies. This was all margin call selling. 
which mm. is like a big snowball, right? You take out that swing low, it causes margin calls. You take out that swing low, it causes margin calls. You take out that swing low, it causes margin calls. And that was just people like Billy Wang and all the cocaine cowboys just plowing out of this, right? Yeah. Uh, come on, they're fund managers, right? Then look at the recovery. This is like yeah. a penny stock. This is not like the S&P 500. Now, on my podcast, I've had Walter Diemer who's an analyst since the 1950s mm -hmm. and is like, he's seen everything, you know, and you read his stat reports from 1972, the S and P is like at, at like a hundred, right. And it moved three points today, right? Look at these swings. So you're, this is a really good question, TJ, because this is, you know, the markets have changed very, very much. So, and that's why I'm scared that the next time this thing blows off, uh, yeah, it's Jesus. It's, it's, you know, uh, when I scream bit off in my trading room, that means don't be anywhere near your mouse, yeah. you know, um, because this thing, you know, it's going to come off like a prom dress, you know, it's, it's not, <laughs> there's, there's no structure in this market at all. It's very, very scary. There's no trading range. I don't know what these clowns are thinking. Right. Uh, but it's, it's, that's why I say trade point to point trade. Yeah. Um, you know, I'll have my levels and I'll say, go from here to there and get out, get, get in, get out, get paid. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, um, because, and just don't trust these pendejos, you know, like, yeah. uh, you know, you, I mean, you're, well, I've got a bunch of guys in my room that are retired vet, vet, vets and, uh, you know, they, I, they, they really, it, it's really cool. Thank you for your service. Really appreciate it. Oh, no problem at all, man. My you pleasure. Know? I volunteer. Yeah. yeah. Where, what, what part of the States are you from? Uh, New York. I live in New York. Oh, nice. My favorite city in the world. It's so, a beautiful city. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> high speed, high speed. Like I like it chaotic. Oh, I love it, man. I, <laughs> it's like the I, charts. It's like the charts. I, That's why I like the one minute chart. Yeah. What I, what, what part of New York? Uh, I'm upstate now. I lived down in Queens for a while. I'm upstate okay. near the capital outside Albany okay, um, in, the, in the suburbs now. My settled oh, down life. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. I used to, I used to be in New York one week a month in the old days when I was in the industry. So it was, uh, it was a good, it was a good time. Spent a lot of time in Jersey city. That's where my market makers were. So nice. Uh, you know, Do you, yeah, uh, are you, are you familiar with the new, um, I forget the name of it. I'm a little unprepared as far as that goes, but, um, uh, regarding the, 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 the short interest where they have, um, in the stock market now where they have, um, uh, they have a certain amount of, um, risk percentage that they can have and they, ha and having to now report short positions There's um, there, every day. I, don't, I forgot the name of the rule. I know it's new. I don't know if that's actually passed yet or was it in comment period, but uh, my uh, buddy's in the stock market. He's, he's, he's big. He's got his own little thing going, but um, okay. he's big into the short squeezes naked, especially. And he was the one telling me that I believe it did pass. So that that was supposed to be okay. a, big, okay. a big deal on the shorts. The yeah. thing is the sh selling short in this market is, is kind of like getting a root canal without any Novocaine. Yeah. Um, there are not that many short sellers left out there. <laughs> Right. Because, you know, these shorts, uh, it, it's really hard to short a market where there's no supply. Um, yeah. You know, it's uh, if you're a short seller, it's a one day, two day thing. Uh, in the old days, we never used to have see in 2005, they passed a rule called red show where you had to borrow stock to sell it. Before that, you could just openly short. And that's why I like trading futures because there's no fake stock borrows. Right. Oh yeah, so he the, was telling me about the, uh, the the phantom shares they have that they have yeah. uh, that they're putting out there. Yeah. See, like what would we do is like what I'd do is I was in the under fifty dollar range, right? So my clients were like hedge funds. So say you had a pharmaceutical company and your stock was trading at fifteen bucks and you needed okay. to raise twenty million dollars, right? My clients would call me and go, "Hey JJ, uh, ABCD company, go lean on it," right? So I would start naked shorting the thing and I'd hide the short position in a Swiss bank in, in, in Zurich, right? And that way it'd be off the books. Nobody knew where the hell it was. And you, so you wouldn't have to report these things, right? And then what we do is I drive the stock from 15 down to maybe about seven bucks, right? I'd cut her in half. Then my clients would walk into the CEO's office and they'd go, hey, uh, you want $20 million? Uh, we'll give it to you at a 30% discount to seven. Right. And the guy's like, 
okay, that's fine because he's just issuing stock, right? The CEO, they don't, they don't care about the shareholders. So they dilute the stock by giving the manager, the fund manager, cheap paper. So the guys who own the big positions have it at a discount to where you're buying it all the time. It's baked in. So say I'm short a million shares that I needed to drive it down. Um, you know, they get a 5 million share certificate, a million shares, they've covered their short. Boom, done. Right. Wow. And now what we do is we take the other 4 million shares and I jam the stock up to 20 and we fan it out. Right. That's how, that's how you finance a company because, and it's not an evil thing because the thing is, as soon as you give that CEO $20 million, he's going to go from driving a GMC to leasing a brand new Mercedes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Right. He is going to be wearing $700 shoes, $5,000 suits, you know, yep. you know, this pendejo, the next thing you know, he's wearing a Rolex. You know, it's, 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 I've taken 200 companies public and I've funded so many of them. They just lose their minds when you give them a big chunk of dough and the shareholders, I can imagine, yeah. you know, and that's, that's the thing. That's, that's the reason the problem with me is I grew a conscience mm -hmm. um, in 2012 because I had a heart attack and I grew a conscience do it. and yeah. uh, you know, you die, you come back to life and you start looking at things and you're like, yeah, you know, maybe I shouldn't be a ghoul anymore. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, and so that's why I decided to, to teach retail traders because I meet people and they just get, they're like, well, I bought it because of the news release. And I'd be like, you read the news release. I wrote that because the CEO was drunk for three days and we couldn't <laughs> find him. Right. It's like, you didn't believe that. Did you? They're like, yeah. You know, you're like, oh, Jesus, you know? Um, so yeah, that, that's why. I got it. Yeah. You know, it's just, uh, especially the new traders. Oh yeah, man. It's, uh, you know, and everybody says, oh yeah, buyer beware. They should know better. And, but there's so much information out there that people just get wrapped up and twisted around in it. Uh, well, yeah. They know. funnel, they funnel them to the, you know, to the information that they, they want them to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So yeah, that's, that's, that's my whole stick on it. That that's why I have the room and, you know, we have all sorts of different strategies in my room, but my whole thing is market structure and how does the business work? Because yeah. what I'm doing in the business is creating the chart that you're trading. So if you have a little bit of understanding about that, then you can kind of keep your head about you. You know, <laughs> yep. you know? Uh, sure. that's good to meet you, TJ. This is, yeah, absolutely. I'm going to have to check out your stuff because I, I really have a lot of respect for retail traders uh, because retail trading, I mean, I've been doing this so long. Um, but retail trading was the hardest thing I've ever done because you can't cheat. Yeah. Yep. Mm. Right. All There's you no cheating. Is hope to, you know, you know take the highest probability trades and, and, uh, you and know, discipline. And, and add that up over time. And discipline and risk management, right? Absolutely. Uh, and psychology. Right. Those are the three things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, all, uh, and, and of course are the three toughest things to master also. So. Definitely. That's the thing that the, the technical analysis, I always say this, the technical analysis is the easy part. It's learning to actually trade. Oh, oh yeah. I mean, we're all looking at the same time. chart. So, so yeah. the reason why we're all seeing the same thing and 95% lose, uh, you know, is, yeah. is the psychology, basically. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> cool. Um, I'm going to wrap things up in a, in a minute. I'm just going to have another very quick look at the Bitcoin chart because we are getting a slight move up towards this uh, big 49k level again on here. So, yeah, it's it's, uh, it's almost 11 o'clock here. I think I, I do have an early start tomorrow. So um, Yeah, you, we're going to go tiptoe through the tulips or something? What are you up to? <laughs> like basically yeah i'm going to a sunflower field tomorrow morning and it's <laughs> well, that's good yeah that's, that's you know normal it's, people's it's, stuff it's is close. good yeah don't end up don't end up like me you know 25 years in front of screens yeah, I, uh, yeah. today's my daughter's got... birthday so we have a party tomorrow she, cool. turns, 10. Oh, nice. she turned 10 today nice. oh nice. Good. yeah happy birthday tj's daughter thank you yeah I'll be <laughs> on again. Uh, so all right, i'm just gonna go back so you guys can see and i'm just going to do a little bit of um yeah back onto here again so yeah back we're back at this weekly level again and this is what we've been looking at for a while so <clears throat> for anyone who's not aware i'm just going to quickly wrap things up um before i say thank you to tj and uh senti and jj 
um of course so it, so we've got a we've got a quite significant uh level coming up here the, this weekly level the big big resistance above us this is where we did get the rejection from earlier and yeah it'll be interesting to see what's happening on here let's have a look at the footprint as well and we can just Again, I'm I mean, still I'm still not personally looking for shorts off of this, but <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm going to be like those YouTube guys, you know, yeah. who, with the with the uh, stand in front of somebody else's Ferrari and uh, say, <laughs> well, and I love those, right? <laughs> like, come, come to, I'll teach you how to trade. This is my Ferrari, and the guy's standing in front of somebody's in traffic. Four nine eight one six. Let's see if if we can tickle that later this weekend. Four nine eight one six. Let's have a yeah. look at that. If you can get a level with it. Four nine eight one six. I'm going to mark that on my chart. We'll we'll be interested. In to Just see curious this. to see if we could get up there and tickle that thing. And what do I think of the BTC market compared to the stock market? I think it's a wonderful thing. I, I think it allows people uh, who have never really traded in the stock market. Uh, to get in there and, uh, you know, have the opportunity to earn an income, you know, I think it's wonderful, right? You know, just like anything else, you just got to figure out what you're doing and always keep your head on a, you know, head on a swivel, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Here we go. This is now immortalized the JJ level. <clears throat> yeah, I, got well, that one I got a lot of levels. I don't got that one on my chart. Uh, no. I do now. Yeah, well, it looks we'll, like see, we'll see how it we'll see how it does. We're, we're, just... we're essentially at major resistance, and this is the last key point in my eyes. This forty nine yeah. to about yeah. fifty one. If we can yeah. crack fifty one, then I think we're that's it. Like the, we're off to the races. My, yeah, these yeah. are my two. <clears throat> yeah. So fifty one three three five and forty nine oh seven four were the two big levels on my chart. Uh, it does appear that we are going to break through that we're just we're on the cme close in two minutes so we are going to close cme in a couple of minutes so this is exactly it's literally exactly what happened last weekend so if anyone was watching the stream last weekend we had this exact same thing happen a few minutes before cme closed 11 o'clock it shut off and we went for a range for the rest of the weekend before Ooh, uh, stop run please let's have a stop run So you know it looks that way. I got I got nothing to oh, do all wow. weekend. Look at that. Rip a dip. Here we go. Okay, let's go let's go a little bit lower. Let's have a look at this thing. Um This is beautiful. Do we have anything trapped up here yet? I'm very keen to see the open interest on this move. It's not following. Okay, so this is the same similar situation so far to what we had last weekend, where I would be quite happy at some point to fade this unless we do get a pickup in open interest. <laughs> Um, and we are. We we oh, can it. It's not bad. It's okay, isn't it? It's a, well, like I want to see if we get you know if we accept in this excess or not. Yeah. Because when this thing changes periods, right, it goes ape crap. It just you know, like, mm. it, it, you know when it when it starts a new profile. Yeah. You know, like, and we're still we're still two hours away from the daily close as well, so there's still plenty of time for this to move higher. This is just the CME. Yeah, uh, market market closing in in one exactly. minute now. So we will take a look at that. I'm I'm almost certain we're gonna end up. Let's see oh wait, has that? No, am I am I wrong? Has this? No, I I still see 359, 359, mm. 56, three seconds. Here we go. It's closed now. Where the hell is it? That's us. Uh, so there now we are. are. Four nine three. So it's probably two. just gonna hold here for a, for a little while. No now we've got a bit of a... <clears throat> Here we go. I want to see this open interest picking up. I want to see buyers. Come on, we need this needs to be followed. We need to follow this price. This is this is amazing. This chart as well. You can see what all of the all the buys that are plus five hundred k on here. So you can see here we've had a six point three million market buy, a five point two million, a six point three million, six point nine million market buy. We're starting to get some sellers coming in now, and this is the thing. This is what I did last weekend. I did fade the move, and it ended up quite nice. So, but we're not seeing as big of a drop off an open interest on this occasion. It's still moving up gradually. So I do think this has legs to go a bit higher at this stage, but we'll have to monitor this. It's when you see 
a big drop off on the open interest and mm. clearly it being a stop run like you were saying jj with yeah. shorts closing out well which... you know I love a good Friday afternoon stop run. <laughs> yeah. You know? It's, it's been like, like clockwork it, recently. It's just yeah. been every single, like, Friday night, we've just been having these massive, well, uh, not massive on this occasion. This is pretty small compared to what we have had, but we've been having yeah. these nice moves up just as we go into the close on the Friday night. Because yeah. they, we- have, they have that 48,600 to 750 inventory, and you can see that their bid is right there at 49,015. And uh, oh, not the forty nine fifteen, forty nine one fifty. I could I could just see that they're coming into that bid and just feathering out their contracts. Mm-hmm. It'd be nice to see. We've got a big position here, forty eight nine fifty. You can see above that. Yeah, yeah. We had a bunch of buying coming in, so we certainly had a lot of effort to break that, and then you just see this float up afterwards, and then you start to get a bit of traps buying at the highs so you can see the imbalances mm-hmm. of the highs here with a lot more yeah. a lot more buying going on than we've got selling and the, there's the size that was used to break through the position let's see that there should be a bid at that <clears throat> j high right from the old j high right around 49150 there should be a bid there mm-hmm. right so if we get to down to 49150 that should bounce from there if it's just inventory correcting if it's a larger yeah. seller it'll cut right through there yeah Kind of cool. Yeah, we are looking. There's a 20 million buy at the highs up here. So yeah, that 49,150 exactly. Yeah, that area, and that that's where we took the stops. So that's where. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got the zero there. <laughs> there's the imbalance right? at the highs. So there's that's, the stop loss. That's where the bid is, or what I like to say, the big ass bid. Mm-hmm. And right? look at the volume coming yeah. in. Here. Yeah. This is great. This stuff is fascinating. Mm. Endlessly fascinating. Isn't it? Uh, that's. I mean, every day is something new. Yeah. No kidding. You, you, I learned something new every day. 30 years now almost. You know? yep. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. I love it. And it's just amazing how it works. Like you you yeah. just have that. And it, it's exactly, yeah, exactly what we were saying. There's the bid. There's where the stop hunt. That's yeah. where the stop loss yeah. was earlier. It, that's where it took the stops. So we're just yeah. testing that now. So at this point, this is that point in which you would expect this to be defended. So mm-hmm. if we are going to move high, you would expect this level that we're at now, maybe it can come down to 49. It's because we do have the volume here. Maybe it can go down there, but I wouldn't want to see it stay down here for any period of time. Otherwise, you're looking at a just typical swing failure pattern, it trying to break out, failing, we're back into the range, and then you're looking down at these lows again. So if we don't hold up here, it's almost inevitably going to come down here and then, hey, we might get a little VWAP trade later on. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, right. We can see how that goes. Yeah. Yeah, so we're an interesting... Uh, I mean, I, I was just going to end the stream and it's typical that this happens. Just, <laughs> just, <laughs> just, just when, when it's... Bet. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> ah, damn it. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, <clears throat> this software is really cool. It is. It's great. And it's yeah. it's just so nice to use too. Mm. I mean, I love Sierra Chart for yes, but it's it's like, oh my god, setting it up is just crazy. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's just yeah, it'll just drive you insane. Yeah. Uh, but this Exo Chart is is just it's really really so intuitive. Yeah, there's so much stuff you can do with it as well. Like yeah. coming down onto here, and we're just looking at like you can take this onto the one minute chart, have a look at that, and. Yeah. Yeah. So now they're back. They're is. backfilling, right? Mm-hmm. See, because when you take the market up like that and run the stops, you create demand. So now you have yeah. a nice pool of buyers to sell into. Yeah. Right. So now they're just, just, you know, like we used to say, when the ducks are quacking, feed them. Mm-hmm. And right? yeah, and, certainly yeah. a lot of stops yeah. taken up on this way, on the way yeah. up. Again, you see all the zeros. Yeah. See all yeah. the zeros, all these. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, that's a nice chart. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's a nice. And we've got we've got the dom meter on the side here, depth of market there. You can oh see my the god, my my guys so. will go after this like crackheads if I show them this. <laughs> You'll have to send me the template. Just I just just so I can tease because I've got all these footprint traders and I'm like no don't look, I don't look at the footprint no, no. <laughs> and they're like what but I'm like no no you don't know what you're doing don't look at the footprint and um you know so I'm gonna show them this just to tease the hell out of them. You'll have <laughs> yeah. to send me the template. Oh yeah, this is gonna drive them nuts. Yeah. <clears throat> 
What yeah, you that? should uh, send send them over sometime. We'll, I'll, I'll, yeah, yeah, I'll happily share this. Uh, and, and you can see it; it's amazing. Like yeah. you just see, you just see this flip, and you just see that here. Here we go. Here's the bids, and they just yeah. push your price up. And uh, at some point, this will just flip over. Yeah, come back down, and yeah. we're able to push, get. They're pushing the buyers into their into their sell orders. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, just allowing price to float up at this yeah. point. Just no resistance yeah. here, so Is price can just be allowed to float up. Yeah, and, the, and they're point. the bid, right? There's, mm. that's really cool. I like that indicator. That's beautiful. Nicely then, done. Yeah, and then where is it we're looking at? Let's zoom a, come across. Where were these previous highs? We're looking back at forty nine one eighty. Was that the high? Yeah. So oh, so we are still above there. So that's okay. That's not really acting as resistance at this point. So we're we're still all right here. We've got a little bounce. We it has mm -hmm. bounced where you would have expected it to do so. Mm. And we'll just see see how this can hold at this stage. And that's the amazing thing. Like so many people will be like, Oh look, prices hit this level. I want to short it, or I want to take a long, mm. or I want to do this. And the thing is, if you just look at the chart and look at what the market is actually doing, it will tell you whether you're gonna long or short. And yeah, it, you don't need to rush into decisions like you exactly. can be so patient on this like yeah. if i start to see that this buying just stops and we start to yeah. get some aggression again from the sellers we change market structure yeah. i'll happily take a short but at this stage yeah. it's just uh yeah just allow yeah. allow the market to just chop exactly. around and, and stop everyone yeah. out and then you get in once it settles yeah the, the very first guy who gave me my very first job in the market used to always he told me one thing he said he goes kid opportunities like a bus there's always another one coming, but you can't mm -hmm. get on the next one if you're trapped under the wheels of the last one. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's, that's great. Yeah. You know, and uh, yeah. And I always remember that he was quite a character. Yeah. <laughs> he is this little East Indian guy who used to like wear a black three piece suits with cowboy boots in right. Vancouver. And he drove this black Rolls Royce. I mean, and it wasn't a new Rolls Royce. It was an old one, but it was just. He was just a character, you know. The old Vancouver promoters were something else. They were hilarious. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Let's have a look here. So where is as a high? Just, just to be aware. Uh, oops. Oh, imagine, imagine if we get the JJ level. <laughs> <laughs> just curious right i'm still learning yeah so we'll see you know and that 48 342 should hold that's where the short was you know that's where they're short underneath that yeah so yeah if we come back below there again let me just flip back over uh, let me just save that there 48 oh yeah yeah for sure yeah if we if we <clears throat> That's the thing as well, though, isn't it? Like, although if we do take out these 48,300 areas uh, and you take these stops here, it's that change of market structure. But for first instance is like you would still expect to bounce off of this and then you just short the bounce. And it's uh, mm. that's the great thing about it. So although at that point it becomes, OK, the, the short position has been able to get out and that creates the buying obviously the buying pressure that creates a bounce it's at that point you've changed the market structure you can start to look for this to come back down again yeah it's definitely definitely a lot of interest in this 49 200 area right now it's where everyone is transacting <laughs> either side of that there's nothing in mm. i wonder what it's like and this is the thing there's all the, all the different exchanges and uh seeing Yeah, same area, 49,200. Hmm. This is what, make, what makes crypto so complicated because you just got to check. You just flick through all the different exchanges. And start that's, you know, I them. thought that, that's why <laughs> when, I started trading, when I started trading futures, I was like, because futures, every data service has a different symbol, right? Mm. Uh, you know, it's like f.us.ep. I'm like, just can't you guys just give it like one symbol, <laughs> right? Crypto's even like, you know, like Microsoft is Microsoft, wherever the hell you look, right? Mm -hmm. But this is, this is, yeah, it's very daunting eh, for people who are like old people, 
right? Yeah. They're like, well, where the hell do I trade this damn thing? You know? Yeah. I mean, from a footprint perspective, like if you're looking at this on one exchange and you're seeing up here just a huge amount of buying without really price going that high with with a big possibly a big trap long at the top here so but then you, you go on to another exchange and it looks completely different so this is ftx and we're looking at bitcoin but if you come over here okay even more so on this exchange you've just got massive imbalances at the highs here i guess leveled out on the next candle a little bit and then you go on to another exchange and things look a little different and then you've got suddenly a lot of interest within this one level so it's it's just yeah know, knowing where to look but but also being aware that really you don't need to get would like to need... see in a future some sort of aggregated order flow mm -hmm. i think that would be really interesting see yeah. if anybody could pull that off yeah because this is another thing that we look at um jj this is another platform we've got uh, that we hell? trade from so this this is a aggregated so this is all of the cryptocurrency exchanges together oh, and this cool. tells you all of the all of the big buys and sells coming in so you can see everything over like oh, wow, so you've got true. like 100k buys a million coming in here a million dollar sell here are all wow. your liquidations the time so, and sales basically yeah oh i was gonna ask where the heck where is the time and sales where's the tape? yeah this, mm -hmm. yeah, this the is tape. the tape this is the tape yeah, Check basically. It it's a really good website for the tape. Right? I think it's the best. Yeah. So there's the tape, so and then you see the blocks. Mm -hmm. Right? Like these are blocks. Exactly. Nice. Oh, this is and you've so got, cool. You've got your CVD down here, cumulative volume delta. You've got all your liquidations and seeing the volume from the liquidations on the. This is really cool. What is this called? Here. This is called AgriTrade. It's a free, entirely free platform. Get out. Mm hmm. Well, there goes my exercise for the weekend. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I right. will. Uh, yeah, here's. Uh, again, I'll just I'll make sure you, you use the version two, or is version three now? Version, yeah, version three, three yeah. now. Yeah. Oh my god! See, this is the only problem when I hang out with you guys, right? <laughs> I get, you guys get me addicted to some crazy thing, and then next thing you know, I know it's it's Monday morning, <laughs> yeah. and my office is a mess. There's paper all over the place. I've been like looking at the software. It's hilarious. <laughs> right? That's what happened with Exo charts. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Hey, it's, that's uh, great. You can you can dive into this. You can customize it however you like. You can choose which exchanges you want to be looking at. Um, we can go down here, like like you say, with it being the tape. I've just put it onto a one second chart, so then I, may, oh I guess it's as close as you can get to it. I like I like the ten second chart. It just puts things together a bit more. Oh my but... god, the the the, de the degenerates in my room when they see this, <laughs> they are going to lose their minds. Oh, it's amazing. Oh my god, they'll be this is this is all they'll be staring at all weekend. Mm. Yeah, but look at this as well. Look, this is liquidations, and I've just noticed this. Uh, shorts liquidated 100k 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 all off of one exchange all these 100k liquidations coming off of one exchange oh, all wow. at the same time exactly the same time hmm. so that certainly it's all one is, guy then yeah must, yeah must be it's all yeah. one guy yeah all on bitfinex Jeez. it's the bitfinex whale he's uh he's been liquidated again <laughs> he's been liquidated oh he got bought in you know what I mean he was short Oh, I, or, or you got liquidated from a long position. But, uh, no, this would be. Oh no, this is. That is bulls getting liquidated. That is so, bulls getting liquidated. So it's a long yeah. position. It's a long oh, position. A long, oh, okay. Somehow, how how so, how long position could get liquidated from this move? It's uh, you'd have to be pretty clear this for that. a oh, hundred <laughs> x at the top. Literally a hundred x. Yeah. Uh, what does that? Look? That's like a three million position so yeah. there you go about 30k cheesy you know, these guys are playing fast and loose with other people's money like you wouldn't believe right you know because a lot of this big money is i mean that's people who are trading managed accounts and things like that mm -hmm. maybe that you know you can always see the trading is a lot more cavalier when they're trading other people's money yeah <laughs> yeah for sure right for sure opm <laughs> all right um all right cool yeah i think this move is probably we've probably seen most of the excitement for tonight i mean uh 
we've had that drop off in open interest now oh no we haven't forget that i this could this could continue a bit higher but yeah we'll, we'll see but yeah thanks i'm i am going to end this now yeah yeah <laughs> but, uh, yeah you did yeah you did go to sleep this is ridiculous yeah. but yeah thanks mm, thanks thank so you much very again much for, right yeah, yeah, thank you guys. very I much, Jay-Z. the invite. Yeah, no nice worries, meeting man. you. Guys. Yeah, have a great night, you guys. Yeah, you yeah. Before you go, JJ. Thank you guys very much for the invite. I appreciate it. No problem. Yeah, well. absolutely. Uh, before you go, JJ, you should uh, shout your Twitter for sure. Uh, oh, that way sure. people would know where to uh, check yeah, out your yeah, lovely chart. <laughs> Look at that. I, I got on Twitter. And there you are. Yeah. <laughs> View at <laughs> Trader One. <laughs> so this is... This is JJ's Twitter, and again, um, I'll do JJ, that. you got rid of the uh, the Grim Reaper. Yeah, well, my girlfriend found that picture in an art gallery in London, <laughs> and oh, she really? said it, it kind of. Uh, and and my oldest client uh, gave me the nickname the Gorilla, so that's why I ended up with that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, thank you very much. Uh, it was a pleasure. Yes, as always. Great fun Absolutely. as always. Yeah. Uh, thanks, we will, guys. Yeah, we'll do this again soon. And uh, thanks again for joining. Have a great weekend. <laughs> All right, you too. Cool. Cheers, guys. All right. <clears throat> Cool. Okay. Yeah, I am going to wrap this up. Thank you everyone for watching. That was really good fun again this evening. Um, I noticed as well, we've, we've got 74 viewers in here. Have I, have I just ended this at the worst point? Because we seem to have had a, a big spike up in viewers. I wonder if we just had some people linked from somewhere and I've just ended this at the worst time possible. But um, if we can... You know what? If you haven't liked the stream already, uh, let's let's get this up to a hundred likes, and I can uh, I can then go to bed happy. So uh, thank you everyone for watching, and yeah, I mean I'm just about to log off, a bit like the video <laughs> after I've gone. 